So this is going to be a minor rebuild of the Mythos Plus um, camper and also replacing the clump crusher. Uh, roughly about 25 hours uh, really depends on the customer usage on when you want to do that. Uh, this particular customer, we do it quarterly. So the tools that we're going to need is we're going to need some rags. Uh, we're going to need uh, a needle nose, a three millimeter Allen wrench, uh, just a standard flathead screwdriver, a pick, a long number two Phillips, and a number one Phillips. food grade lubricant, so we use a uh, Kluber synth. You're going to need a spring for your tamper spring. This is your pressure release spring. And then a couple C-clips. They are not necessary to replace. I like to keep them just in case I lose one. And then we have our clump crusher and the screw for the clump crusher. The other important tool that you're going to need is your shop back. So the first thing we want to do is shut our machine off. Uh, if you feel more comfortable, unplug it. Flip our front panel open. Shut our beans off. We want off. to shut our beans off from the grinder, so we slide our lever all the way over to the left. And now we can remove the hopper. So now we want to use our shop vac to vacuum out the rest of the beans and vacuum around the grinder to get all the loose grounds out. Our next step is, is we're going to remove the whole tamper assembly and front burr holder. These four screws. So you can, uh, with your long Phillips, and you can go ahead and move up your front display. And I like to do the top ones first. So I use a lot of force pressing in to the screw and twisting out. So sometimes you have to grab onto the machine, otherwise it slides across the counter. And then once you got them loose, then you can go ahead and take them all out. So the next thing that we're going to do is take this front plate off, which gives us access to the screw that holds in the, the outlet uh, and the um, clump crusher. So what the clump crusher does is it gives the coffee a little hold back and, and also prevents it from spraying everywhere as you're grinding. So you get a nice flow coming out. Okay. So now we're gonna remove the screws. This is where our number one Phillips comes into play. So how often do you change the clump crusher? Every, every time you're taking apart the grinder, about every 25 hours. Okay you're gonna to wanna to wipe your slide cover clean. So now what we're gonna do is go in and with our pick, just gently break apart the coffee. And then we will vacuum all of our loose grounds out.
So these are a titanium coated burr. Uh, you should get roughly around 4,500 pounds out of them. That's roughly around 100 hours on the grinder. Uh, here again, that just depends on the type of coffee that you're using and the, the grind that you have coming out. So one thing to keep in mind with your pick, you're not wanting to scrape the surfaces. Uh, because you create gouges that the coffee now has something to stick to. Uh, the pick is also good for cleaning out your Phillips screw holes. So like I'm going to do that right here on my, my screw for the slide. And that's our next item to remove is the slide screw, which is straight in here. Now our slide can come out with the clump crusher. Let me see that. That's the clump crusher. Yes, this is our clump crusher. And as you can see, this is it's fairly worn and broken in to where the, the teeth are way over here. Mm -hmm. uh, normally they will sit right about right at that angle. But you will see through time these will actually break and go missing and the other thing you want to do is clean your slide So now we just want to wipe all of our internal parts here and on the, flint, the plate itself. Just wipe around everywhere inside where the clump crusher goes. And then we will do uh, one last vacuum of this chamber. So this is, this is the clump crusher, and there's a screw hole there. And here's the slide with the screw hole. And we just want to line those up and fold everything over to where it's approximately where it needs to be going in the machine. And then we want to break in our teeth just like that. You just fold them over just once, and that will be enough to kind of line things up. And once you put it into the machine, everything... Um, will go much more smoothly for you. We're going to put our clump crusher and slide assembly back in the machine. Usually I would recommend that a customer did not do this just because it is difficult to do but if you <laughs> have enough practice on it just keep in mind that these pieces are not cheap. So now we want to slide everything in place and you'll notice that hole has slid up a little on the clump pressure. That is fine. That is normal. Now we're going to take a new screw and screw everything together here. I usually give the slide a little wiggle just to make sure that it is all locking in place. So another important thing we want to do is make sure that all of our teeth are going out. So I will take my pick and just gently make sure that they're all out like that and there you go. So now we're going to put the slide cover on uh, with the two screws that we pulled out with it. So now we're going to put our slide back in place. Get our first screw just so that it's snug. And then take our second screw. Now we can just tighten them in there. 
Now we're gonna do the minor rebuild on the tamper. And we're gonna wanna go ahead and just wipe everything off. Now what's the difference between a minor rebuild and a major rebuild? So the minor rebuild is just we're replacing the two springs and lubricating. Okay. A major rebuild, they have a kit which includes a shaft, uh, a ball, um, and assorted other components. Okay, and when do you do a major rebuild? About every 100 hours. So four times, uh, four service, so four minor rebuilds, yes. basically. Okay. And inside your grind chamber here, you will find that certain coffees will get a lot of buildup in here. So you may have to break all of that apart with a tool or a brush actually, not a tool, with a brush. Because you don't want to score it. Yeah, is that you what you're do saying? not okay. want to score your chambers because now they have something to attach to. Okay. So, and one thing that I want to go over, the reason it's important to rebuild these is mainly uh, keeping the pressure consistent and we want to get lubricant back into this. I've seen many customers ignore rebuilding these. They get to 100 hours and we can't even rebuild them because they've worn. We have metal parts. This is an aluminum body, metal parts that are inside of this shaft here. So the, once the lubricant is gone, now you have metal grinding on metal on aluminum and the aluminum will wear out. And you'll either end up replacing this whole assembly, which is, I believe, $400 plus dollars, uh, versus what you're gonna be doing just on a regular maintenance. So the first thing uh, I'm gonna do here is just unscrew our tamper. And we're gonna go ahead and clean some of the grease that's... Sorry. We're gonna clean the grease out as much as we can. Now one thing that I'm going to do is we're going to leave our our pressure release uh, fully engaged to keep the shaft in place. So now we're going to remove both our C-clips. So one is on the main shaft. We'll set that aside. And then the other is, is on our, our tamper arm. And then on our tamper arm, we're going to push our pin all the way out. And of course, we're going to wipe that clean. And now, with our three millimeter Allen, we can loosen this. And you notice that the tamper shaft just popped down. Now I can remove the tamper body and we're gonna clean all of that out. We're gonna go ahead and wipe our other parts clean. We're gonna take our tamper shaft all the way out with the spring. Spring is getting replaced, so we'll set that aside. And the rest of this assembly here, we want to just clean all the grease off. This is why I say you're going to need several towels, because obviously you're getting this towel all greasy. And if you have to go back and wipe around the burr area or in, inside somewhere, you want to make sure you use a clean towel. Now, is the oil... Um gonna make it harder if you have an oily roast it's gonna be a lot more um, you're gonna have to put more effort into this or uh, not on the tamper side just okay. internally gotcha which should be clean regularly the customer should be able to take this this assembly out and clean inside the burr area and clean inside the throat to get all of that clean because Within those 25 hours, if you have a really oily roast, you most likely will have to clean that out. 
So they may not necessarily have to take all of this apart, but they may want to take this, this assembly off so they can clean inside the grinder. How often would you do this? Uh, uh, if you owned this machine, if I owned it, yes. I would I would probably do it monthly. Okay. Minimally weekly, you want to be vacuuming out your grind chamber. So once we have that all clean, just clean inside here. See all the grease on my towel there. side and you can see the ball right there you just want to make sure that that does does not fall out Here's our spring. So this particular grinder actually has not come anywhere close to 25 hours. Um, and the tolerances of the springs are pretty close. Um, usually when you hit 25 hours, you'll see the springs will stay compressed more. And that's why it's important to replace them. So the older spring is going to look shorter. It'll look shorter. Gotcha. Okay. But here the key is, is once you've removed anything, if even if you're not going to replace the springs, it's important to get things lubed up again. Yeah. I have the tamper body, and we're going to go ahead and, and, and put a little bit of lube in here for our ball. Now, of course, if you are inspecting the ball and you see a lot of gouges or a lot of heavy wear, you want to replace this item as well. Uh, you'll also find that on the shaft, there would be heavy wear on the shaft. There is some wear on this shaft, but not enough to be replacing it. So lube inside of our chamber, and then a little bit more lube behind it for our spring. And then we will get our bolt here started. And we're not compressing it all the way in there. And we also want to make sure that our ball is not protruding through in our shaft hole. And I'm just going ahead and kind of getting the lubrication that came through there, just rubbing it around in the, in the shaft hole. The next thing we want to do is heavily lube our main shaft and get that spread all over. We also want to spread it around our uh, t top brass um, fixture here. This is this is where the whole the the tamper um, pin goes through. And then of course this this part here is sliding up and down on our main shaft assembly here. So that's why we want to get lube around it so we're not wearing out these pieces right here. Now we can go ahead and slide our spring on there and just get our lube around the spring. And now, and we'll just put a light coat of lube in between here and go ahead and start getting this all put together. So the next thing I'm going to do is just grab a little lube and here's a little trick I learned is I'm just going to put my something to you so that I can get this pushed through more. Get that lubed Put a little bit of lube on the top there. And now I'm going to push that through. And now I'm going to tighten. You don't have to.
to tighten it all the way and now the shaft will stay in place. And now I can take my C-clip and put it in place and my needle nose fix it the rest of the way. Now I can put a little bit of lube on my my pin and then that will slide all the way through and take my other C-clip and fix that. And now we can go ahead and put our cap back on, our tamper cap. And with a clean towel, I like to wipe that off so there's no lubricant sitting on that. And then I will go ahead and just snug this up. And that is the rebuild or the minor rebuild of our tamper. So now I'm just going to go over if we were replacing the burrs. To replace the burrs, we're going to replace, uh, take these three screws out, and then that burr will come out. One of the things you want to make sure you do is clean underneath this. So when it's removed, obviously, you can clean it, because you never want to set a burr on top of um, a bunch of coffee that's sitting there, because then you'll pitch the burr, and then you will get uneven grind throughout. So burr replacement on our lower burr holder, I recommend you taking this out. And the reason that is, is because you will find coffee buildup underneath this. Now keep in mind, this is a reverse thread. come out just that easy but so you will see how much coffee builds up underneath there and you want to get that cleaned out so obviously the tools you want to use for cleaning all of this is just a little brush uh, toothbrush will work so to get to get this out it was a 20 millimeter which fits right there Obviously, if you had a skinnier one, that would be better. And then 17, which is that. Keep in mind, this is a reverse thread when it's going on and off. And if you were to replace the burr here, you would just take these three screws out. And then replace your burr and, of course, clean all underneath the body there. So, yeah. the, the other thing you want to do is just clean inside of our chamber here and go ahead and vacuum everything out. So when reassembling, you're going to notice there is a, a slot there that will match up with the bottom of the grinder housing, which is my pointer right there. So see that's the flat side right there, which is going to match up with that flat side. So you'll see, you can wiggle, you notice that it's engaged. If you got it off, it's going to sit a little high and you can keep turning it till it just slides right in. Okay. And then you just put your washer on. And then here, remember, it is a reverse thread. You just need to tighten.
Don't need a lot of force on that. For reassembly, I like to put my, my two Phillips screws already in place on the top. And I'm just barely snugging that up. And then I'll go ahead and put my opposite bottom on. And barely snug that up. And then go back to the top. And then do my last opposite bottom. And now this one I will tighten, go to the opposite top and tighten, and then you can go to the other top and tighten that, and the other opposite bottom, tighten that. Now another thing you want to do is break in your spring. So you just want to do several, a whole bunch of tamps here. Make sure it's free, it's not hanging up. If it's hanging up, continue to work that in. Top back into place. I just, I like to just push our tabs in a little bit. Same with the top. Right. So the other things that you want to inspect is your activation switch. Uh, you want to make sure that it is moving freely it is a magnetic switch, so generally they don't go out unless they're hanging up or if you notice there's a, a piece of the body missing here. Sometimes we get severe cracks where it's actually, at, you know, the switch is hanging up itself. Um, I generally replace these at every 100 hours or if I feel like there's enough of the body missing where the switch can get pushed inside the machine. Uh, the other switch, too, is the main on-off switch here, which I generally replace at the 100-hour mark, too, just because coffee grounds tend to get inside the switch and eventually will block the contact points from actually turning on. Uh, one additional feature that this grinder has um, is the portafilter holder. Uh, this is an additional part. It does not come with the grinder. You have to order these in, put them in yourself if you want that. Otherwise, the uh, the fork plate is, is standard, but of course the customer has to hold it in place. So the other thing that you're gonna wanna do at your 100 hour uh, is take the bottom of the machine off and vacuum out all the loose grounds that are inside the unit. So the other thing you wanna inspect is your button pad. Um, the new style button pad has two large areas that affix the button. Uh, the uh, older style will actually have uh, three smaller tabs which are prone to break. As you can see on this one, one of the buttons is missing. Of course this one actually, because the customer broke it through, they were pressing directly on the button behind and broke it too, so we ended up replacing both the board 